In 9.2, we're going to talk about climate change. Before we can talk about climate change, though, we need to talk about greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons. The greatest majority of the greenhouse gases emitted by humans are is carbon dioxide, mostly coming from things like electricity, heat production, industry, agriculture, and land use, and transportation. In the United States, most of it is transportation, electricity, industry. Same thing we see that carbon dioxide makes up the most of our emissions, followed by, by methane and nitrous oxide. So greenhouse gases work by trapping in heat. So we start off with sunlight. Sunlight contains all the different types of radiation, the visible light, um, ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, and so the ground absorbs that and then releases infrared radiation. And then that would float back out into space. However, greenhouse gases, what they do is they basically bounce it back to the Earth. So if there's more greenhouse gases, that means there's more heat being reflected back to Earth. So just a real quick note on water vapor. So sometimes students can think like, well, water vapor is a byproduct of combustion, so therefore it must be a greenhouse gas. Um, or um, it's like a really bad greenhouse gas. It is, but it does not contribute significantly to the global climate change because it has a short residence time in the atmosphere. So it's not able to do the damage that other things like carbon dioxide and methane can. So it's important to note that the natural greenhouse effect is important. If all of the heat left the Earth, then we would be an ice planet. But the fact that we have these greenhouse gases there, it keeps heat trapped in, in the iron in your inside and allows us to, to thrive. But the problem is we're putting in a lot more greenhouse gases. And so it's trapping in more heat that our Earth just, you know, we can't, we can't do that. Um, different greenhouse gases have different potencies, which means their ability to trap in heat. So we measure it in terms of carbon dioxide, so the, t the potential of carbon dioxide, um, and then multi like, multiply by a certain number to say, like, is that many times worse than carbon dioxide? So like methane is 25 times worse than carbon dioxide because it would take 25 molecules of carbon dioxide to trap in the same amount of heat as methane, and then 300 for nitrous oxides, and then thousands to tens of thousands for fluorinated gases. So if you go back to last week's lecture on ozone depletion, um, the hydrochlorofluorocarbons and chlorofluorocarbons, or COCs and HCOCs, they were phased out because they deplete the ozone, and they were replaced with hydrofluorocarbons, which lack the chlorine, so therefore they don't damage the ozone layer. However, HFCs, uh, they are a very potent greenhouse gas. So it's, even if it's only a small portion of what is like, what we contribute to the atmosphere, it has such a powerful impact. That's why there's been a push to, uh, to get rid of HFCs as well. So we get the data for climate change from two different sources, our direct observations. You know, we can tell what the temperature is that day. We can use sensors to figure out how much carbon dioxide is in the air or gauges to tell us how high, you know, water level is. So we can use all these things to piece together our recent climate and these indirect observations um, to help us figure out the past based on, well, if we see this much of something, we know the cause of that is this temperature, this kind of precipitation, um, and therefore we can use that indirect evidence to figure out um, what the climate was like in the past. So like ice cores are really popular when they um, have like little uh, frozen bubbles of carbon dioxide so we can put a, take a slice of an ice core to see exactly how much is in this, this you know, like the slice of ice, um, and then use that to infer what the temperature had have been based upon how much carbon dioxide there was. Um, and it doesn't come just from one piece of evidence, but it's multiple pieces of evidence all coming together to 
to help us make these conclusions. So some important ones that you want to know about is the Mauna Loa Observatory. Um, so they set up a carbon dioxide sensor station on um, a Mauna Loa in Hawaii. And they did this um, in 1956 or so before 1960. Uh, and they've been able to use this to see exactly how much we've increased uh, just to 2020. We see this seasonal oscillation because um, plants will determine how much carbon dioxide versus oxygen, like if there's more photosynthesis happening or more cellular respiration happening, that's going to change the amount of carbon dioxide over the year. <clears throat> However, the highs and lows are consistently getting higher, so the average of the carbon dioxide levels has been increasing by a lot. Um, you know, it used to be a really, really big deal. You need to get above 400, and now we regularly are above 400. So that's, that's not good. We can then um, use other data to figure out uh, how it's increased since the revolution or the industrial revolution. Um, so like it was pretty consistent, and then the industrial revolution came around, and we've got more cars, more machinery, um, just you know more advanced ways of of doing everything but then that in turn produces a lot more carbon dioxide we can look at ice cores to see carbon dioxide back move further and we do see you know there is like a pattern but more or less like with how much carbon dioxide is but then we also see uh, that correspond to ice ages so when it's at a high point that's when it's a like a warm period when carbon dioxide is at a low point this is when we see an ice age occur um, so this tells us that there is a correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the temperature of the earth uh, normally the high or just like the last 800,000 years the highest was like 300 something thousand years ago so this it's never gone above this line consistently and here we are, like I said, well into the four or yeah, four hundreds. <laughs> so it's not just carbon dioxide; we've seen an increase of all the other um, major greenhouse gases. Okay, <clears throat> so causes. <coughs> so yes, increase in fossil fuels. These fossil fuels come things from things like transportation, um, cars and planes and ships, anything that we use to to move ourselves around or the stuff that we need to to be human um, we can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide or the fossil fuels being used by carpooling using mass transit um, even shopping local so the goods that are brought to your town from another place like that requires fossil fuels in the transport so if we minimize the amount of transport that has to be done for our food and our goods then we take away that source of carbon dioxide Electricity to heat and light and ventilate our homes. We can reduce this by switching to renewables that don't produce greenhouse gases using energy efficient appliances or devices to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that um, is used. If industries uh, to produce just all the things, whether it's in a as a raw material, so for instance, making cement, um, and that re releases carbon dioxide or the fuel that it requires. Um, the transportation of the goods so we can reduce this by switching to renewables and cleaner fuels but also recycling to reduce the demand and that you know, for instance also reduces the amount of mining which reduces the amount of land use that has to be done to get to the mine and um, the roads that have to be built and the machinery that has to be has to be ran um, commercial and residential big thing as heating and cooking uh, the waste that we produce, the um, wastewater treatment, uh, anything that comes to and from our homes, all that stuff, like from where it came from and where it went all along the way, you know, that's using fossil fuels. Um, so we reduce this through energy efficient designs for cooling our homes, for managing our waste, for um, recycling more, things like that. Uh, reduce the waste that's sent to the landfill, especially, or especially organic things, because that um, produces methane as it as it uh, 
decomposes using methane capture at landfills so the methane that is produced at least we can take it and use it as opposed to just you know, going out into the atmosphere being a potent greenhouse gas phasing out HS hfcs is a coolant agriculture comes from things like fertilizers as it you know decays in the soil um, livestock especially cattle release methane from the diet that we feed them it's just not right for their systems and so that produces a lot of gas that they'll either burp out or fart out um, mostly burping so don't get too excited <laughs> uh, so manure also releases nitrous oxide and methane uh, the way that rice is grown it's done by flooding the fields and then that anaerobic environment produces methane in the soil we can reduce this by better fertilization practices uh, draining water from rice paddies so we don't have you know, the flood situation happening improving the diet of livestock so they're eating things that are more gentle to their system better manure management systems using anaerobic digesters so they can take organic waste like manure or the parts of crop you might not use they can uh, take advantage of anaerobic respiration um, or, uh, decomposition and then capture that methane to then use as a fuel source for the farm so they can be more self-sufficient just a picture doing all the different things with land use um, the conversion of forest land to grass or croplands uh, that takes away a major sink for carbon so we're producing a lot of carbon dioxide and then they're taking away something that would hold on to it and take it back and put it back into the earth you know, reduce this with better management, sustainable use of soil, so there's less of a demand for new croplands. Because um, if you take good care of the soil, then you don't have to move on to a new place. You know, to cut down all of those trees and burn them and um, have more crops or cropland. All right, I'm going to pause real quick because I have a 15-minute time limit on this program, and then I want to talk about the effects of climate change.